We are a generation who loves God. We are a generation who trusts in God. We will always hope in God. Welcome, 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 my dear friend, to another video brought to you by GFM United Prayer and Revival Ministry Studios. It is Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez here, and I'm so happy to be with you. It is another day that God has given us by His grace and by His special, by His wonderful grace. We will keep on going and we will not give up. I want to encourage you today and I want to speak to you about the will of God. The title of my message is Stay in the Will of God. It will protect you and it will bless you. Let us begin by welcoming the Holy Spirit and then we'll go into the scripture. Precious Holy Spirit of God. God the Spirit. We welcome you. Come and touch us and lead us closer to Jesus. Give us a revelation of this word that we may know what the word is saying concerning the will of God. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friend, I want to start by reading to you a scripture that I've read many times, but it's very important, especially in this season. And it's from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, from verse 21 to verse 23. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And cast out demons in your name? And do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Now, it's very important that we take note of the words over here that say, I never knew you. Because in order to know the will of God, in order for God to speak to you and guide you, you need to know him. You need to develop your relationship with him. Get to know him. And as you get to know him, as you get deeper, he will reveal his will to you. I'll read it from the beginning now where you will see. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. So it starts with knowing God. And then you begin to know his will. As you press in deeper and get to know God more, he begins to reveal things to you. He begins to speak to you on your heart. He begins to speak to you in the way that you understand. And it's in the way you know that it's God. It will always be in line with his word. It will never contradict the scripture. The moment it contradicts scripture, you can know that that word is questionable. It's most probably the flesh that you're hearing. But the moment you hear in your spirit that God is speaking to you and it is in line with the word, that is confirmation that God is speaking to you. Hallelujah. I want to read to you from the Gospel of John chapter 4 from verse 31 to verse 34. It says, Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. So the disciples were worried about Jesus at this time when they met with him. This was just after he met the woman at the well. And he spoke to her concerning her life. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, I'm sure they moved away from him and they were discussing. They said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. As born again believers, we must develop this mentality. Let the thing that satisfies us 
be doing God's will. Fulfilling what God has sent us to do. Whether God has called you as a politician and to make a difference in that country or city or town, um, as a born-again believer, whether God has called you into ministry, whether God has called you to help in your community with various humanitarian efforts, it is important to accomplish what God has sent you to do. It is important to follow God's will. What is God's will? We need to ask that question. God, what is your will for my life? What do you want me to do? Here I am. Send me. I love what uh, the prophet Isaiah said in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. I want to read to you quickly. Chapter 6 verse 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. And he said, Go and say to these people. It's verse 9. I'll stop there. But one thing that we need to know. The Lord asked a question. And there is something that is revealed to us over here. It is the attitude that the prophet had. And the mentality. The Lord asked the question. He said, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Many go for their own uh, ambitions and their own motives. Many go for other reasons. But who will go for God? And I love the attitude of the prophet over here. He said, here I am. Send me. I'm willing. I'm willing to go. I'm willing to do your will. I'm willing to go. I know it may not be so easy. I know they may not listen to me. I know uh, things may, may happen. I may get persecuted. But that doesn't matter. Here I am. Send me. I will go. I'll share the word that you give me. I will do what you say I must do. And as born again believers, as we draw nearer and nearer to the end, we need to be of such a heart. When God speaks to us and says, Go, we are hungry. Where we jump up and we say, Here I am, send me. When people ask who trusts in God, we jump up and we say, I trust in God. I trust in the living God. I'm telling you, my dear friend, I've never seen those who put their trust in God being disappointed. Put your trust in Him. God's will for your life will make you happier than what you think you need for your life. Sometimes we think we know it all. We think we know what's right. We think we know what we need in our life. But God knows better than us. Because God goes beyond the limits of time. He is outside the bounds of time. He sees past, present and future all at the same time. He sees all possibilities. And all ways that things can go. This emphasizes why it's so important that we must listen to Him when He guides us and He shows us where we should go. We must listen to His will. In saying that, let us go into a time of prayer. We're going to praise God just for a few moments to warm up and then I'll begin to pray for you. Father, we praise You and we thank You. Praise Him in Your own words. Thank You for Your goodness. Thank You for Your mercy. Thank You that You love us so much. Thank You for Your will. Thank You that through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we can have a relationship with you. And we can know you. We can know who you are and how much you love us. We give you praise and we thank you in the name of Jesus for this day and this word that we've received. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear friend, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray, comment and agree, connect in faith, believe and receive. Father, Lead, my dear friend, closer to you. Let my dear friend get to know you. 
And as my dear friend gets to know you and develops that personal relationship with you, reveal your will to my dear friend, your will, your perfect will for their lives. That my dear friend, dear son, will be truly blessed. My dear friend, dear daughter, will be truly blessed. Going in and coming out, your children will be blessed. And they will see the promises contained in your word come to life. Simply because they are willing and obedient. And we know from the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Those who are willing and obedient shall eat the best of the land. We give you praise and we thank you for this. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you, my dear friend. God be with you. May the grace of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. If you were blessed by this video and you would like to support us to keep making content like this, you can do so via PayPal or Patreon. The links are provided in the description. God bless you and goodbye.